Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the next game in our playlist. That's why right. this game is another classic RPG, CRPG. Um, but this time we're going to a different set of rules. That's right, we're going medieval, baby. Sword and magic instead of technology. Uh, we are in Pathmaker. What? Bah. Pathfinder, <laughs> Kingmaker. Uh, this game came out quite a while ago. I know there's a sequel on the rise, so I figured it's a great time to pick up the first game and see how it plays. So welcome everybody, welcome to Kingmaker. Let's get started. I don't know much about this game. Um, I played, was played just a bit just to get the hang of what I'm doing. But other than that, no, not really. Uh, I'm gonna use him. It's my background drop. They got some nice backgrounds. I, them, but I wish they had more. So, let's see. We're gonna go half elf. Ooh. I like this better face. I'm sad they don't give him a really good hairstyle. Okay, let's see. Uh, so my health health of King Census, uh, my wasting traits. Uh, plus two to one ability score at creation. The character gets plus two to the ability of the choice. King Sense Avenue for these uh, adapt ability. Can I tell what they are? Uh, King Senses, dwarves, elves, gnomes, half elves, half orcs, and halflings receive a plus two wage support on perception checks. Oh, nice. Ever immunities. Elves are immune to magical sleep effects and gain a plus two. Wasteful saving throw bonus against enchantment spells and effects. That's nice. Adaptability. Half hour seems skill focus at a bonus feat at first level. Oh, nice. Uh, let's see. Elves have long drawn the country's glazes of other races to generous to lifespans, magical infinity, and inherent grace, which is each contribute to the amelioration of bitter uh, envy of their neighbors. Of the traits, however, none so entrenched in human society as the beauty. Since two ways first come into contact with each other, humans have held up elves as models of physical perfection, singing the fair folks idealized version of themselves. For the part, many elves find humans attractive despite their comparatively barbaric ways. Drawn to compassion and this which when most of the younger ways play out their bleak lives. Sometimes, this mutual friendship leads to romantic relationships. Although usually short lived human standards, these twice commonly led to the births of half elves, a race descendant of two cultures that inheritors of either. Half elves can breed like with one another, but these pure blood half elves tend to be viewed as bastards by humans and elves alike. Half elves stand taller than humans but shorter than elves. They inherit the lean build and comfy feature of the elven lineage, but their skin color is dictated by human side. While half elves retain the pointy ears of elves, they are more rounded, less pronounced, and half uh, and half elves' human-like eyes tend to range the spectrum of exotic colors, running through an amber or violet, amber green or deep blue. Ooh, nice. Uh, out of all these classes, I'm not gonna name each one, or well, might we see them later on? Uh, because there's a lot of classes. There's alchemists, and each one of these classes have like, uh, they're side classes. So if you really want to know what a class does, you are more than welcome to. I think there's a wiki out there. You can go look them up and see. But I'm gonna be an alchemist, a grenade, uh, a grenade alchemist. I throw bombs. I like throwing bombs. A big boom. I just come in, ch chuck, chuck, oh, 
Boom. Love it. Uh, so I'm going to be a bit of a wange. I want to kind of take his picture with me because can't really see a lot of dark half elves in here. So, yeah. So, Grenier, bomb throwing, half out. Colors. Can I? You know what? There we go. Uh, I think intelligence would be my most needed skill. I got 18. Uh, about 16 here. Here we go. 12, 12, 18, 16, 12. I don't need much for strength. I'm going to put that strength. But yeah. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna take two from that. Oh, uh, I can't do more than 13 in charisma. use knowledge of the area law of nature uh, magic devices and persuasion I'll put perception later uh, you know I want to do this persuasion. I want my my okay, is the main character. I want to be able to talk people out of stuff and point blank shot. So next, uh, let's see. Bomber eye. This allows you to throw weapons further and more accurately. Oh, this extract is in effect. Increase the range. Range of the alchemist bombs and all weapons by 10 feet. In addition, you receive one insight bonus on attack walls made with the throwing weapon. Cool. Uh, this is some, I'll be like midfield so I can heal people if I can. So, kill rooms as well. Enlarge. This spell causes instant growth for a humanoid creature, doubling its height and multiplying its weight by 8. The increase changes the creature's size category to the next larger one. Mm -hmm. This Target gains a plus two bonus to strength, Ooh. minus two penalty, a uh, minus two penalty to dexterity, to middle of one, and a minus one penalty to attack rolls and AC due to increased size. Melee and range weapons used by this creature does more damage. So, while well, I lose one on penalty, I probably double my attacks. So I'm taking that. Um. The spell increase, let's see, Expedition Retreat. The spell increases your base speed by 30 feet. The suggestion is treated as an enhancement bonus. There is no effect on other mods of movement, such as bow wall, climb, fly, or swim. Uh, probably not. Uh, fire Belly. Medical Fire warms your belly, grants you five resist, fire, uh, resistance, fire resistance five, making your gut hot to the touch, not enough to damage you or anything. As a standard action, you can breathe a foot. 15 foot cone of flame that does 1d4 points of fire damage. The flex halves as all applies. Saving walls applies. Each time you breathe this, use this weapon, the remaining duration of the spell is reduced by one minute. Oh. Reduce a person. This cause is a miss. 
So aim for one plus one attack rolls and AC to bonus size. So this is the opposite of enlarge. Okay. Shield, shield creates an invisible force that hovers in front of you. The gate magical missiles attack structure at you. The disc also provides a plus four shield a bonus to AC. Ooh. Uh, when you throw bombs, when you throw bombs, they can only hit a direct target. Ooh, they just do not splash. However, the bombs does space damage plus double your intelligence, uh, intelligence modifier instead of just its base. Uh, plus, or just as base damage, plus your uh, intelligence modifier. I just figure if I'm fighting one enemy, I kind of, you know, instead of hitting out the wide field, I can just toss him for more damage. I'm actually, I'll, t I'll take that. Uh, true strike. You gain a typically intuitive insight into the immediate future during your next attack. Your next attack. Single attack wall, if made before the end of the next round, gains a plus 20 insight bonus. Additionally, you are not affected by the mischance that applies to a target trying to strike a concealed target. I'll take that too. So that's it. So how do I sound? We do it my way. I'm not touching that. I will guide. Time's not waiting. We will be victorious. This will hurt. My wounds pile on. Everyone counts on me. The path is clear. My skills exceed yours. Yeah, I like that voice. So he's reserved. Name him Zane. Uh, let's see. What are my favorite dates? Yeah, here he goes. Uh, he's neutral good as well. There are others around, but I like neutral. Neutral good. Let us bide our time. So Coupe de Grace, uh, as a full round action, you can use a melee weapon to deliver a Coupe de Grace to help his opponent. You automatically hit and score a critical hit. If your defender survives the damage, he must make a 42 save. Uh, a DC 10 plus attack base attack plus melee damage attribute modifier plus weapon crit modifier or die. Delivering a Coupe de Grace provokes attacks of opportunity from throwing opponents. You cannot deliver a Coupe de Grace as a mute. Pre-tribute to critical hits. Okay. And then we have our other skills, Munigen. At level one, an alchemist discovers how to create a Munigen that can in order to hide his physical prowess and the cause of his personality. To stand in action to drink a Munigen upon being in battle, the Munigen causes him to score Burki Mobistro, creating him a plus two natural armor bonus and a plus four alchemist bonus to the next to select a better score. For 10 minutes per alchemist level. In addition, while the mutant is in effect, the alchemist takes a penalty, uh, minus two penalty to one of his mental abilities scores. The mutant enhances its strength, it applies a, a penalty its intelligence, enhances its dexterity, applies a penalty to his wisdom. If it enhances a constitution, it applies a penalty to his uh, charisma. Okay. And then his my traits, super weapons focuses and stuff like that so i have alchemist professions simple weapons proficiency martial art weapons over here my skills i'm a six persuasion so i can talk my way out of shit. uh arcane knowledge world knowledge at four i have knowledge of nature good mobility perception is at two so i'm not the most eyed look stuff at three uh plus three at trickery and plus six at musical device so i'm good at using magical devices um i'm not good at athletics so i get hit by everything i guess you could say uh my ac is at 13. just that bad flat-footed ac is at 10. Touch AC is at 13. I uh, have a speed of 30. I've got fortitude, uh, plus five reflexes, and no pluses to will. So it'll just be a simple will. I have a plus three on initiative, which is nice. Minus round count, oh, because mine is safe. Uh, minus round on combat remover. So if I stay the same size, I, nothing happens. 
Uh, my attacks minus one. Range plus three, so I like that. Okay. So let's hit complete and let's get started. First map. at the mansion of an Aldori Swordlord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. Continue. I like the storybook story telling. It's kind of cool. I might have to change my camera. Where are they? Yeah. Uh, game goes silent. Let me change my camera. I wonder if I can just there we go. Right, just now that then I'm just floating when they're not talking. Oops. There we go. Forever. It didn't even say what this was for. Just that the outdooring were looking for heroes. Hopefully, is that too bad in this corner? Outdoor anyway, rich fuck. If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier. I kept he say I thought he kept saying whore, but it's whole. The most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. <laughs> if you see, so if you see oh, on the top part, you can see there's me right here. Uh, there's two. Uh, there are these two talking. Hush, quiet. Is there? I like how it kind of points and locates who uh, who's talking. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori. And this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restov. Welcome to my mansion. Ah, thank you for welcoming thank us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless. Exactly what Restov needs. Oh, okay. I didn't realize this, but yeah. Green parts is just something you can hover over and it shows you the kind of like information. First off, it's one of the largest or one of the two largest cities in the fertile regions of Washland and the Southern Periphery. Lord Mayor Ho uh, Hosefis Salimidus leads the city, uh, which is a trade and cultural center that borders the River Kingdoms and the Strike Rivers and the Stolen Lands. As a birthplace of Adelaide and Dueling Style, the city boasts several Adelaide and Thailand and Dueling Scorch, which has led to the city being a favorite place for young nobles to practice Dueling Championships. Most appropriate among them is the Adoria Academy, which regards as the Legion's finest war college. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to I'll leave the Stolen Lands up here, here so you can kind of we pause and region known as the Stolen Land. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the stolen lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state as well as the noble title of its founder. Nice. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, mm -hmm. and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? Ah, uh, a couple. Oops. I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. Uh, don't like this dude in five seconds. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. 
<clears throat> if I may please answer the question. He's kind of white. Shit. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Uh, why not recognize this stag look as the Baron? That's a good point. As I see it, this stag lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? Perhaps because we do have Duke standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> and that's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. The Dillion Soul Lord woke us from frame when a salt man when Sword Man's Baron Salad Adoy agreed to train us like Koopa Poopers in his dueling techniques. They ruled Ausland for generations, each as prickly as and as the uh, Order's founder. Although they are considered some of the finest swordsman fighters in the inner sea region, they are obsessed with personal, with personal standing and honor. Okay. Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around, or whatever it is you do. Yeah, don't like this dude. This dude is a prick. Of we stand to benefit from this enterprise. But if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, well, please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling mm -hmm. power we can negotiate with. Not bandit gangs and monster hordes. I uh, gotcha. What is that smell in the air? Is it the smell of unspoken words and political intrigue? He noticing you, her, her comment, and she winks at you coyly. I think it's our investment, and our word is clear as day, so let's Excellent. take it. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. No, no problem. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage, the unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. I shall. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? I'm Zane, like pleased to meet you. Actually, I also wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about okay, head start. the Geo fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team and he's just after the Baron's crown or whatever it is Baron's <laughs> wear. It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This, this is the person I'll write my book about. Wait, a book? I should have led with that. Please. Just let me explain. Okay. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? That's true. And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or gods forbid, Tartuccio? No way. Not a bad plan itself. That I'll accomplish the feats you write them down. Deal. To write about tonight. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Uh, you can't really have a conversation with anybody. They kind of just tell you to leave. 
Um, F2 have a burning torch, crossbow, a spear. I'm gonna change that up soon. But let's head on out for the evening. Uh, oh, yeah. Click this icon to exit the area. Oh, now click the icon. Now, this might be a long episode because I want to get kind of get through the prologue. So, might go as long as the prologue. I think that's what we call it. Uh, what's going on? and started killing everyone i barely made it hurry we have to help the guards fight off the attackers or we'll all be cut down one by one gotcha Ooh. get screaming in the background all right let me get myself ready to go what oh, what's this they're not going anywhere combat general Combat happens in real time, but you can pause the game anytime to access the situation and give orders to your companions. To pause or unpause the game, press space. Click on the important in order to attack them. To switch between time based and real time modes, use game settings. Dice rolls. Most of the game mechanics are based on the Pathfinder role playing game system. You use dice rolls to determine the result of actions. McCormick's die has 20 sides and used for both checks and attacks. When a battle starts, each combatant makes an initial initiate uh Initiative check. The higher initiative, the other their character can act. The initiative score being viewed in the combat log. Combat can be two rounds, each round lasting six seconds. Uh, the attack roll is the character's attack to attempt to strike an opponent. The result of an attack roll depends on many factors, wooden weapons, combat abilities, etc. An attack succeeds if the result of the attack rolls equals or exceeds the target so armor class. The amount of damage dealt in the case of a successful attack depends on the weapon stats and the other effects such as buff spats. Attack rolls results in damage numbers can be found in the combat log. The higher a character class character's armor class, the more difficult it is to see or attack them. It combines many factors such as equipment stats, the robotics, passive abilities, etc. Okay. Okay. I like playing now some people do real time in policy stuff. That's fine. I, I really like con Turn base. I'm kind of used to it, so I'm going to keep it that way. In turn based combat, characters act in turns. In other turns, is a turn by the initiative attack and depends on the character's corresponding ability score. An attack can take some actions during the turn, and then the turn of the next character and in the initiative queue starts. The initiative queue, the order of turns, is based on the initiative check at the beginning of the combat. The higher the initiative of the character, the lower they are displayed in the queue on the screen, the earlier they act. You can delay your person's turn until a more convenient moment. Do this, select the characters who turn you want to delay. In the queue, in such actions, any initiative are irre reversible. The new initiative score is saved for the character until the end of combat. However, you can still delay the character's turn again. During this turn, a character can make a single standard action, a single move action, a single strip action, and an unlimited number of free actions. Of these actions together, take six seconds of the real time. Most Often a move action is used for movement or drinking a potion. A standard action for attacks, spell casting, or additional movement. And a strip action for activating special class abilities, other combinations is also possible. There's also a so-called full round action, which consumes both your standard and move action. By default, the system chooses an optimal combination of, of a, uh, action types to perform your command. You can change this combination using, what is it? Yeah, white mouse. Surprise round. If you initiate combat with an opponent who is unaware of your presence, your party gets an advantage of the surprise round. During this round, your opponent's your character can take a limited number of actions while the opponent cannot cannot act. Move actions, we, t we talk about that. It's how you move, standard actions, mostly combat actions. And full wall actions uh, are long actions that consume both uh, your standard and your move. Uh, it could be used so called full attack. If the character can. Make more than one attack per round. Taking a full action round action allows them to make all the attacks. Some character abilities such as charge and spells are also considered round for one action. Gotcha. Five foot step. A character can move five feet without triggering the enemy's attack of opportunity. A character can cannot both take five feet step and make a regular move in the same round. Hold left shift to use the five step uh, instead of a single movement action. 
free and shift movements, these actions are used to activate character special abilities such as uh, Smite Evil, Judgment, a touch, a check that's casting spell, or many others. You can hold control to ignore enemies and other objects under the course of precisely select a perfect position to move a character. Cool. Alright, my turn. I'm up first. Because I'm faster than him. Uh, oh no. <laughs> it won't open. I, I, it won't open my, uh, did it take too long to read? Okay. Weird. There we go. I don't know why I did that, but I'm going to toss him an alchemist bomb. And to kill. All right, I need to follow these. Connect your for various objects such as bodies or of the opponents by clicking them. Your objects are highlighted with the blue outline when you hover mouse over, over them or when you hold tab. Right, here's a chainmail shirt and a dagger. I'll take that. I'll go ahead. And I'm gonna walk into this room. And uh this dude's dead. Uh list is general contains your current tasks, quests, and tasks. Uh changes we also see uh, uh, uh when the no the status changes, you'll see a notification on the main screen. To open Liz's journal, press J. Alright, this dude is dead. And I can't see any treasure. But he did have a bow. Uh, that's what I kind of wanted. A bow and a dagger. Bow and a... There we go. I'll be watching in a minute. I am very... Actually, this probably be too pop prologue. The path is clear. They got someone, we gotta help. Hey look, the one and get them. What shall we do with this one? Finish him later. Won't get away. Okay. So we're gonna do what we did last time. Since he's not kind of highlighted, we're gonna just click here. This spell eludes me. Oh, we're just gonna click him. Move up one. Oh, Throw a bob. A bit longer, and I'd have been. Whew, I don't even want to think about huh. it. He definitely will feel safe. Terrible loss this would have been. But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed. Ready to lead you to victory. Yeah. Jamand is holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before? We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. I don't like you. Speaking of dummies, take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. Yeah. Moon plus a plus one bonus to armor classes. A flexion bonus does not stack with other flexion bonuses. Yeah, I'm not putting that on. Oh, wait, well, you know, I'm going to equip it. Yeah, I ain't equipping that. This guy's cooked. I'm just going to get these two. All right, so this is this half of the prologue. Uh, we got two care questions. The first half, we need to. Kind of like our first mission, but before we even get there, we are under siege. Uh, I will be uploading. Save. 
of probably this and the second episode all at once so you get double the prologue so be prepared for that and uh yeah i will catch you in the next episode you guys have a great time see you then bye bye